Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. And for the start of this episode, we are on a mission. We need to unlock the next tier of circuits, the nanoprocessor and the nanoprocessor assembly. And new circuits is always a very exciting day because you know what that means, right? Oh yeah, new circuits means more machines. And if it wasn't already obvious by last episode when we set up Epoxid, I certainly love machines. And I believe we're actually about to approach 100 buckets of Epoxid. Oh yeah, look at that, it's over 150 buckets of Molten Epoxid. We'll use this for the circuits. But yeah, we had a relatively slow-paced episode setting up the LCRs last time. And just to try to keep things interesting, I really want to pick up the pace here. It's going to be a grindy episode for me. But uh, hopefully a lot of fun for you guys. We have a crazy amount of resources to go through today. And I think it should be a good time. Are you guys ready for some Greg Tech? So we start off today with more LCRs, we need two more fluids to automate for the circuits. I decided to put them next to Epoxid, which we set up last episode. One of them runs at HV, the other one at LV. We give them the two pipe casings, the Cooper Nickel coil, machine controllers, fluid detector covers, machine controller covers, two gas turbines for power, and we connect those to the temporary benzene line. And then fluid P2P for the output hatches. This will be sent back to main storage and give those a channel. The first LCR is for iron 3 chloride made from iron dust and hydrochloric acid. So we need an input hatch and an input bus. And then again fluid P2P for hydrochloric acid input. The second LCR is for sulfuric acid. Water, sulfur and oxygen gas, circuit number 7. The water is very simple to supply via a reservoir. We can just hook that up to an input hatch and place a pump inside for insertion. And then we need at least an MV input hatch for the oxygen since the recipe calls for 24 buckets. So again we can connect that to Applied Energistics Fluid P2P so that we can request oxygen from the system. And then both of these LCRs require an item input, right? So I wanted to end up sharing the input bus and then I remembered about something. There's a new gadget in GTNH called the Stocking Input Bus. Honestly, it is pretty expensive, costs some platinum. I thought it would be worth it though, so I did actually end up crafting that thing. But now we have two more LCRs to add to our collection. Iron 3 and Sulfuric Acid. And you might be thinking, we already have this one here which makes Sulfuric Acid. There it is right there. And yes, this does make Sulfuric Acid for us. But this is reliant on the fact that we have to distill oil. This one actually uses hydrogen sulfide to uh, turn back into sulfuric acid, which is really the only use for hydrogen sulfide. There's no other use for it. So we're basically just dealing with a byproduct here. But there's going to be cases in the future where we have to make sulfuric acid, and we don't necessarily want to wait on oil here. So using the water sulfur oxygen recipe, we can get around waiting on this. And speaking of this oil system, actually, I did make a very slight change, which I think is worth mentioning. So you guys know that we read the output buses here, right? We want to make sure the recipe doesn't run if there's anything in the output hatches. And that is still the case, but I found that all the way at the end of this process, these distillation towers were actually backing up, and it would lock the whole system. Because we decided last episode we're not storing naphtha, we are just directly taking it from the desulfurizing LCR, into the oil crackers and then into the distillation towers. The problem was that we actually get naphtha as a byproduct here in this tank. In fact, there's already some in here, which is okay. But this was actually backing up way past the threshold and it was turning off the distillation towers. And then because the distillation towers were off, they weren't consuming the naphtha input. So the naphtha from here had nowhere else to go because this input hatch was full but yet it was still making more from desulfurization. So it was adding naphtha without anywhere to go and it was locking the whole thing. So to prevent that, we've actually added one of those wireless redstone gizmos on the bottom of this tank. We're on frequency 137. And that sends a signal over to this output hatch over here or this LCR. And it's also taken into account using the AND gate down here. 
So along with making sure that these things have space for the fluids, we also make sure that this tank here is above a certain threat, no, below a certain threshold before it adds any more naphtha into the system. Yeah, I have no idea if that made any sense. I hope it did. Basically, we prevented a jam and the distillation towers are now running once again. But we also have to implement the same thing for sulfuric acid. Since we don't want to make any more, if there's already uh, enough available through hydrogen sulfide. But we actually know how to do that. All we have to do is put a wireless fluid detector cover on sulfuric acid. Frequency 151. Fluid threshold 64 buckets. Inverted. And then the water sulfur oxygen LCR will only run if that is below 64 buckets. Analog mode 151. And this will be enabled with redstone safe mode. And we can point this downwards. And it stays off. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. So what did we need sulfuric acid and iron 3 for? Well, lots of different things is the answer to sulfuric acid, but uh, iron 3 we need specifically- Oh, there's a lot of mobs here. Yeah, we need those things as part of the circuit, and it looks like we're missing a few quests. I think I actually do want to pick these up. The first is for phenol, we need 36 cells. We have 3 million here. There's the quest. The next quest well, is going to be quite uh, frustrating because it wants us to pick up epichlorohydrin, which we are making. But also bisphenol A, which if you'll remember is the circuit 24 recipe which we actually bypass. So we're not making bisphenol A anywhere, but we need to hold it for the quest. Yeah, we are going to have to do this one manually in this LCR, since we don't make it anywhere else. Alright, now we're waiting on like 36 cells of epichlorohydrin, like 30 seconds apiece. So in the meantime, we can actually take some of our epoxy. 450 buckets. <laughs> that is excellent. And there's two uses for molten epoxy. The first is to fluid solidify into sheets. I think it's two stacks for the quest. But once we have our quest, we then need to make the epoxy circuit boards. And this is where the sulfuric acid and the iron 3 come in. So the, this is going to be another chemical reactor. And along with the epoxy and fluids, we need gold foil and electrum foil. This is going to be an insane amount of gold to use here. Fortunately, we have quite a bit on backlog. I think we actually have some in our AE system. And maybe in the furnace. Yeah, there's a bit here. We need to make some more electrum. How is our supply? Oh, yeah. 2,000 gold. Oh, that is so nice. You know what that's from? That's from me being diligent with the chemical baths. And electrum? Okay, not quite as much electrum, but I think we have a lot of silver. Yeah, there's a decent amount of silver we can make electrum from. All right, we have all the materials. Let's put them together. So after kickstarting multiple stacks of gold and electrum foil, I went over to fluid storage to collect some sulfuric acid. And this whole process with the chemical reactors is something that we'll have on Autocraft soon. But for now we have some other bottlenecks to take care of. So my goal was just to batch craft as much as made logical sense. <laughs> I mean you can never have too much of this stuff, but we don't want to use too much gold without ore processing to replace it. And while waiting for some of the gold and electrum to finish, I went over to the nether since we need glowstone for the next tier of wafer. So putting all of that together, we eventually got the quest for the epoxy circuit boards. This feels awesome. But this is only one small piece of the puzzle for the next tier of circuit. We are also going to need some more SMD. I found that we actually had a decent supply of SMD, but I decided to craft some more anyway. The SMD transistor, resistor, and capacitor. And then we need the next tier of wafer, which is molten glowstone, raw carbon fiber, and CPU wafers. This does have to be an EV though, so I overclocked the large chemical reactor that we have, doubling up the energy hatches, and actually we had run out of energy hatches after crafting all the LCRs. So again, that was something that I batch crafted. So once we had that and fixed up the LCR, I consolidated all the materials for the next year of circuit. So 
So, you know, I was thinking, what if we could have a circuit that was automatically crafted for us by the end of this episode? Now, that probably does sound quite ambitious given our circumstances, since not only would we need to move this clean room, <laughs> which is going to take forever, and if we're going to move this thing, we might as well upgrade it in the process. It's also going to require us to invest in new EV machinery, in the form of the circuit assembler, the cotton machine, and the laser engraver. And we're going to have to get applied energistics auto crafting CPU capability, which is not something that we currently have. <laughs> but with the many, many hours of crafting I've been doing here, I, uh, I filled a bit of a compressed chest. It kind of got me thinking, I want this to be the last time that we have to do this manually. Manually just is not the name of the game here in GTNH. Or in modded Minecraft. I mean, that's not really what the game's about, right? <laughs> we need machines to do everything for us. And I suppose you can also say some magic automation on the side. Which is something we are going to get to, by the way, in this series. But I, I wanted... I want to get us to a, a decent enough stable position within the tech progression before we start to work sideways and we have a little bit further to go here in EV. The first thing being to unlock these nano CPUs. So I made the nano CPU wafers, we have to cut those in the cutting machine. I also made two more IV circuits, we've made these things before. And these ones are the mainframes. And then using the mainframes we have to make the circuit assembler to craft the nanos. Yeah this one, the advanced circuit assembler 3. It's my one. <laughs> yes, it belongs to us. It belongs to me. And this should be our quest. There we go. Oh, you know what? Actually, how are we going to power this thing? That is a good question, right? We are in GTNH version 2.2.3. And as you guys know, we do use benzene to power the base and all of the gas turbines. And in this version of the pack, there is no EV gas turbine. At least not a single block one. There is a multi block, which we are going to be crafting here in the next couple of episodes. I was thinking about getting this today, but uh, I think we want to move the clean room today. So for right now, we're just going to kind of cheese it a bit and use batteries. Oh yeah, we also got this Scenarium one from a quest reward. Or from a loot bag, I mean. I don't think I recorded it, but yeah, we got that. Th it's actually worse than the Lapidron crystals. We're going to grab a few of these. And yeah, the circuit assembler, as always, has to be placed inside the clean room. I think for right now, we're just going to stick it like here. <laughs> Since it doesn't have to be plugged into the wall, we can't plug it into the wall, even if we wanted to. I mean, I guess we could transform up from HV. Yeah, these three machines here are HV, and this one is MV. So we will just use the battery system and grab this chest. Oh, and you know what? We might as well grab a conveyor for this as well. IV conveyor? Should we, <laughs> Should we just use an IV conveyor? I mean, sure, we got these from the loot bags last episode. I'm going to forget this is on here as well. Yeah, and it should automatically import the items it needs for the recipe. And the last thing is the nano component central processing units. That's a mouthful, which is also a quest. And along with some solder and alloy, which we have some spare here, we should be able to craft the first nano processors. Oh yeah, 10 seconds per recipe. That's really not too bad. Yeah, and the battery is actually lasting pretty well. So just to bring everyone up to speed on where we're at in circuit progression, I've shown this chart before, but we are currently here. Not even halfway. <laughs> a little bit scary, I'm not going to lie, it only gets more complex from here. However, the nano processors is equivalent to the processor assemblies, and also these advanced circuits, which we've been crafting for many episodes by now. And it also allows us to craft the nano processor assemblies, which was uh, the other one of our goals for the start of this episode. And the assemblies replace the workstations, which we, we have been previously using. So we've now unlocked the, the cheapest version of the LV, MV and HV circuit, and we're on the second EV. There's one more to go after that. And I believe using all this technology, we can actually craft the second tier of IV circuit. Yeah, this also takes epoxy boards. It does take platinum though, because it takes diodes. But yeah, the next quest is for the nanoprocessor assembly, the EV circuit. So I think we'll make up a batch of those as well. It's just gonna take some extra small coils, which we have here. Yeah, we have quite a bit of SMDs here. Alright, so not too long later, we got the first stack of nanoprocessors. And while we're waiting on the rest of the circuits, let's also look at crafting the EV laser engraver. We're not going to have the workstations available. And this will also have to make space for when we move the clean room. In fact, I think at this point, the whole thing is going to need a rewire. I'm getting kind of nervous just thinking about it. Uh, it's going to be a massive project here. Can we actually get all of the rest of the stuff? I believe we can, right? It's just the circuits we're waiting on. And then there's also the cotton machine, which we might as well take into account at this point. A diamond saw blade, do we have one? We don't have one of those. We also don't have the EV conveyor. We can make one though. 
So yeah, it's two more circuits for this and the diamonds. Can we make this by any chance? Do we have cobalt brass? Oh, nice, we do. <laughs> I really dislike making this thing. It's like uh, brass, cobalt, and aluminium. I mean, it's not super difficult at this point. But we need this in gear form. Okay, here is the diamond saw blade. We're just waiting on the circuits now, I believe. You know what? We actually have the materials for three of these things. Why not? All right, and second stack of nano processors. I think we're gonna have to make up some more random access memory. I'm not sure if I have the right lens here. Might have just wasted a wafer, but I did make up quite a few more wafers here in the blast furnace. It looks like we're also coming to the end of our SMD stockpile. We may not be able to get as many as I thought, actually. Maybe just two and a half stacks will be good for now. Yeah, we got around two and a half stacks and we're now crafting the assemblies. All right, we should be able to get the laser engraver and also the cutting machine. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have the machines to go inside, we need to move this big white box. And we are going to upgrade this thing. I'm not sure which size we're going to go for yet. The maximum is 15 by 15. Honestly, though, I'm not sure if that's going to be necessary because later on, we don't need the clean room as often as we do in the early game. There's some really cool uh, multi-blocks which can take care of circuit crafting for us. But we are going to need it basically the whole game, certainly in EV and IV. So let's do this properly, shall we? This is going to be a grind and a half. What did I sign up for? <laughs> Alright everyone, so I think the hardest part of this is actually done by now, if we can get through the gate. The big white box has now been moved, and it now sits very conveniently actually below the terminals, below this catwalk, below our server room, two levels, <laughs> below the wiring tunnel, and into the clean room. And to be honest, I think this is the perfect location for the clean room, and here is why. So the plan is basically to have a centralized power right around here. I do have some other plans for down at bedrock level. But yeah, right around here is going to be centralized power storage. I want that as central as possible due to cable loss. For now though, just keep in mind that power is going to be extremely janky and we're going to be using batteries and turbines like always. It's really our only option at this point in the game. With what we have available to us, it's the only option. Yeah, so I basically built a box within a box. I wanted to make sure this was as clean as possible. I mean, it has to be, right? It's in the name. It's kind of a shame we can't put any more glass in the front here. I think this is actually the maximum. I did try with a few more blocks, but it didn't actually form the multi-block. But anyways, let's collect these machines and figure out how we're going to wire this up. And I think we've actually done this in the wrong order as well. I realized as soon as I took down the old clean room, we should have actually built the... these things. The crafting storages. <laughs> I completely forgot about these, actually. I mean, we should have enough circuits for it. It's just the, the applied energistic circuits we don't have enough of. Okay, so I think what we're going to do here is take out the MV connection. There used to be an MV circuit assembler. We're going to completely remove that, just so we're not working with three different tiers of power. We are just going to have EV machines here. Cutting machine, laser engraver. And 
Wait, this is HV machines, yeah. HV machines and EV machines. And as before, we have 4 amp EV cable diodes and a 4 amp HV cable diode. Remember, the diodes just pass power through the clean room walls. And then, yeah, we have laser engraver, cotton machine, and circuit assembler. And then also, as we know, this big white box needs power itself to uh, keep it clean. So we give this an LV energy hatch. We're gonna, we might actually bump this up to MV. It basically just affects the passive draw on power, which we can't really afford right now, but also means it gets up to efficiency much faster. So if you'll remember, the efficiency mechanic on this clean room controller has to be 100%, anything less, and there's a chance that we void recipes within machines in here. And to keep it up to efficiency, you have to keep the door shut. So I might actually just remove this door, but I, I kind of like having the door in there just in case. It's not really in the way. Uh, yeah, I guess we can keep it here. So yeah, two gas turbines into a red alloy cable to power the clean room itself. Then underneath these diodes, we have four amp battery buffers. This is HV. This one is EV. We have some Lapitron crystals here. In fact, I was making up some more Lapitrons. Yeah, and here there's nine. That's perfect. We don't quite have enough for a tenth. That's okay. Yeah, these are only the raw versions, so we need to convert these with HV circuits. Uh, yeah, we still have a full stack in here, a stack in 10. We'll use these old ones first. And we were actually able to get a few more of these nanoprocessor assemblies, the EV tier. Before I took down the clean room, I did actually craft a few more. So yeah, it's definitely going to be enough to last us until we get this, this uh, clean room operational. That's going to take a while, 30 seconds. In the meantime, though, we do have to make sure this is powered. Okay, so what we'll do is HV transformer in transform up mode. So this outputs one amp of EV power. That's going to power the battery buffer. Then we'll have to give at least four amps to the transformer. We can do that using some cable and to some gas turbines and make sure these are all facing the correct way. We do also have to automatically supply these with benzene, but I think we might do a similar thing to what we've done in the chemistry room. Oh yeah, we have to power this HV one as well. I suppose we'll need a few more gas turbines here. We're out of steel rotors. Yeah, we'll give this one too. It should be enough. I don't, I don't suspect we'll be running that many machines for a prolonged period of time that we need a constant four amps on this thing. And unlike the multi-blocks, I don't think we void inside the clean room if the machines run out of power. Obviously running out of power is an issue, but uh, not catastrophic as, if, as it would be inside a PA. So yeah, the power should be taken care of now, which is the part we know, and we'll, we'll clean all this up once we can centralize power. Now comes the fun part, now it is applied energistics. And you might be wondering, how are we going to send applied energistics into here? I mean, it's not like we can knock a hole in the wall, right? And there's no diode, as far as I'm aware, for uh, AE cables. However, there is, and I haven't looked at the recipe for this. So, <laughs> this could be a massive fail right here, let's see. There is a wireless solution. The wireless connector, this thing. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. How bad is the receiver? A Flux Pearl. Ender Eye Rod, HV Circuit, and this is Ender Eye Plate. Can we craft this? Yes, we can. Nice. And we'll need two of these things, a sender and, and a receiver. <laughs> Thank goodness we can actually craft this technology. Probably something I should have checked beforehand, but uh, we're okay. We're in the clear. We're missing a little bit of Ender Eye, though. Oh no! Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I just made 39 EV machine casings. Oh, mistakes were made. Okay, we got ourselves nine interfaces, not that we need that many. We also need some P2P connections. And then also a wireless setup kit, which is what we need to actually bind these two connectors together. And I'm told that these things are actually buffed in the latest version. I'm not sure if it's in 2.2.3, but they do unsurprisingly cost energy to send channels. And it's based on the distance. There's a, it looks like there's a formula here for it. But basically, the further apart you have these, the more power it will consume to send channels from here to here. And it makes sense to go in the middle here, right? So I think we'll put this right around here. This, by the way, is connected up to the wiring tunnel. And this is also connected to the P2P, so we're on the main network here. Okay, so I believe the other connector is right behind... Oh, it's one space up. Yeah, I guess we can put it right there. We can minimize distance, so it's one block minimum. So it will use the least power, which is what we want at this point. 
And then if I remember correctly, it's just shift right click, bound to coordinates, and then right click on the other one. Oh yeah, draws a line. So yeah, these are basically, it's like we're plugging directly into that Fluix cable back there. So we now have eight channels inside this clean room. So now we need to get some automation going. And to do that, it's actually very simple. All we have to do is take a screwdriver and enable input from the output side. So items can effectively flow in and out of the machine from the same side. And it also allows us to make use of the automatic output feature on the machines. Then we can give each machine an interface. The other thing we need for this is actually two more P2Ps. So that's H, wait, does this take a channel? No, I, no, this can't take a channel, right? I think it only sends channels, it just takes power. Okay, so we want these to be fluid P2Ps. And these are gonna send a lubricant into the cotton machine, since these take either water, distilled water, or lubricant. And we're gonna send soldering alloy into the circuit assemblers. And we'll disconnect these two cables. But obviously we don't have soldering alloy or lubricant on passive yet. We will get to all of that automation soon. But this distillery over here has been turning creosote oil into lubricant. We use as part of the ore drill. So I think what we're gonna do is take some of this. We want to res reserve some of it. It doesn't actually cost too much lubricant. And we'll assign this a new tank over here. I think this one right here is free. That's epoxid. This one is free, yes. So this one is now gonna be lubricant. And then the soldering alloy, we have some spare. And we'll also give this a fluid tank. Man, this advanced memory card is so nice. I love it, it's awesome. Make sure we never use green channel. Always brown channel for insertion. And just to be safe, I think we will actually filter these connections. Uh, cell of lubricant should work for the filter, right? Yeah, perfect. And the bottom one is gonna be soldering alloy. We'll make sure we enable round robin here as well. That way it should try to distribute things evenly. And this one is gonna be soldering alloy. And then finally, link the two P2Ps together. And we should see fluids inside these machines here, right? Yes, perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love this system so much. Some of you guys are still not convinced by it, but uh, I'm, I'm totally won over by this uh, one fluid P2P per, per fluid type. It makes it so easy just to bind anything we need. I mean, granted, it is it does cost a little more power because all of these devices draw power. But I, I think if we're going to go with this method, it's best to set this up early and not try to switch to this later on. So uh, even though it does cost more power, hello creeper, even though it does cost more power right now, I think the investment is worth it. So now what we have to do is get the applied energistic CPUs operational. We are going to have to make up some more diamond chipsets for this. Or no, I have made up some more diamond chipsets. We need to turn these into item circuit twos, these things. And this takes an EV laser engraver. And that was one of the machines we just crafted this episode, which currently sits right here. The recipe for the chipset though doesn't actually require the clean room. It's different from say, I don't know, the LUV circuit, which does say it needs to be inside a clean room. But this one, I'm sure we can just put in the diamond here and we need a diamond lens we should have. And is this gonna work? Yes, it does, nice. That's probably because we have some charge left in these batteries. Yeah, but we do actually want to look at hooking up power here. That does mean we need to free up a channel though. And honestly, I don't think we need two cotton machines connected to AE. We'll keep one of these manual. And that allows us to put another fluid P2P down here. And then we can run some ender fluid conduits to all of the gas turbines and supply them with benzene. This is gonna, this is, <laughs> this is gonna be so spaghetti. I love it. This has to be the worst wiring ever. Look at this. <laughs> Nothing exploded, that's awesome. And we are now getting charged again to these Lapatrons. Perfect. Oh yeah, and look at that. The recipe got automatically sent back into the interface. So it should now be in our disk drives. Wait a minute, only 16? Is it four per? Oh, it's four per recipe. Wow, that's expensive. Yeah, so now we have to run these through the form and press with the diamond chipset. And of course, there is one more step here. These are very expensive. <laughs> we have to run these through the assembling machine with the engineering processor. This gives us the item circuit tier twos. And this is the thing we need to make 16K and 64K storage components. I believe this should also be our quest. This is actually a pretty difficult choice. Do we take two? Nah, we, we take the good bag, right? Yeah, and you know what? We're even gonna spend one of these tier twos to enchant the AE good bag. This is different to the basic bags, which we opened previously. Should technically be more favorable, let's see. 
<gasps> what on earth? Okay, that that's awful. Get these out. <laughs> Get these away. But these things, look at this. We just got eight 16Ks. I actually do not believe that. That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, we have another we have another uh, good loot bag we can open. I wonder if we get any more. That is crazy. Wow. Oh, I didn't check the chase on this either. Yeah, we have one more we can use here. Let's actually sacrifice another tier 2 processor. Let's open one more of these things. Okay, not quite as good, but the acceleration cards, actually, those are great. And some dense cable. They, those are also very expensive. Actually, yeah, you know what? That is just as good. That's awesome. <laughs> and in fact, it costs these acceleration cards to craft that the ME thing that I made earlier. This thing, the stalking input bus, which I realized I didn't actually talk about. But uh, yeah, it's, it's effectively like an interface, which also can act as an input bus. So we are requesting sulfur and iron dust from the system. And it will try to keep it stocked, as the name suggests and make those items available for these LCRs. It's really, really cool. I like it. All right, everyone. So this is the final manual craft of LV circuits. It turns out we were down to just one, which we actually need here to craft some more crafting storages. I also made up some of these Project Red Illumination lights, which I think work quite well inside the clean room. Can't be using torches at this stage, right? But I noticed there was a dark spot actually on top of these machines. And if you guys have seen season one, then, uh, well, <laughs> we had actually a creeper inside the clean room. That scared the life out of me when that happened. But just for fun here, we did actually manage to get two more enchanted AE good bags. Let's see what we got. Oh, this doesn't look as good. Just some cards, I think. Wait a second. No, no, no. We got some more 16Ks. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> and another quick... Wait, is that another one? Is that another good bag? It's over here. Oh, we got the pattern expansion card, right? Yeah, these things. These are so exp... Look at this. This takes two 16Ks each. They're very useful as well. But uh, yeah, I think that should also be another good bag. Are we just going to open these bags all day? <laughs> I mean, it's so worthwhile. We might as well, right? What did we get? More 16Ks? I think we did, right? And more inversion cards? I think actually a few of these 16Ks will turn into storage cells. I noticed a few of our server drives. Oh, that's actually another quest. I bet that's another good bag. I noticed a few of these things were getting a little bit full. That should, uh, that should top us up for a while. But yeah, there is two more things we need here for Applied Energistics Auto Crafting, and that is the crafting storages. We have one right now, and we're going to make up three more now that we have the crafting units. This is what we needed the LV circuits for. And I'm sure most of you guys are aware of this by now, but basically the bigger the crafting storage, the larger and more complex the auto craft you can requ request from your system. I think actually four of this is going to give us another loot bag, right? Game. Yes. <laughs> uh, to go along with the crafting storages, though, you also need the co-processors, which are made like this. Oh, is it two processors per? Yeah, so the co-processing units go alongside the crafting storages. And this basically... That's also another quest. And these things provide additional item delivery from the CPU to the ME interface for crafting. So basically, it means that you can do more recipes in parallel. And all of these are, are going to take some channels. We're going to have to set up a dedicated space for this. Oh yeah, I'm not actually sure if I showed this connection here, but I uh, hooked this up to the staircase, which leads up to our server room, just tucked in nicely in the corner there. It's mostly just meant to access the server's tunnels, and once again provides us more connectivity around the base. I'm missing a few blocks up there though. So yeah, if you guys have any great ideas on where we can place these crafting storages, then let me know. For today, we're just going to give them a channel and we'll uh, rebuild them later. So yeah, it's a multi-block, ha it has to be square. And now we should be able to actually encode the patterns for the circuits. We might as well start off with the tier 1. And we've unlocked the second cheapest recipe. There's still system on chips, but we're not going to get those for a while. So it's going to be still the SMD recipes. Yeah, and we want to make sure we are actually using SMDs in the recipe, so we have to pull from NEI. I mean, we could use substitutions, but I, I don't like having those on if we don't need them. These, I think, are meant to be set to 2. Yeah, so this is the recipe for the LV circuit. 
And this thing goes inside, we can take all this stuff out. This thing goes inside the interface in here. Oh yeah, and we, we actually have to give our system all these items again because we need the items available for Applied Energistics to send to the machines here, right? Oh yeah, and you have to be extremely careful with drawers. I think they're increasing it in the next patch, but um, anything over two stacks will be voided if you break the drawer. Oh, this feels so awesome to do this. Okay, all these ones are empty. And yeah, we can just give the whole... Oh, I, I should have just put it inside the compressed chest, right? We can just break these ones. These are just normal chests. And the lenses we'll keep here. And the rest of the stuff we can just put in AE2. Oh, shift click everything. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. But we actually should already see the recipe in AE2 for the LV circuit. All right, everything has been transferred. We get a free compressed chest. And are we able to craft these microprocessors? Let's see. It does let us request them. Let's do a stack. Yeah, let's do a stack. A stack of circuits. Let's do this. It's going to be sent to CPU 1. There is only one CPU available. We hit start. We check the crafting screen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, we did it, guys. We did it. We have our first... Wait. Let's not talk too soon. Let's make sure they are actually crafting. This should be at 100% efficiency, right? Yes, it is. Perfect. And yes, the circuit assembler did receive the items. They are automatically being sent back into the interface it came from, since we enable input from output side. And yeah, I would call that a massive success. I'm very pleased about this. Now, of course, we, ha we have to encode the rest, as well as, as the other machines. But in theory, it should work, right? As long as we have uh, the pattern set correctly. And we should see it actually on here. Yeah, it does show on the CPU. Oh yeah, the other thing I want to mention is I, I am aware of fluid crafting. Applied Energistics fluid crafting is actually viable in GTNH now. Meaning that in the future, we can actually get rid of these P2Ps for this specific processes, for on-demand processing. We can get rid of the P2Ps and send the fluids in as we need it. But for that, I'm waiting to update the pack. There's uh, still a few stability issues with the latest versions that I'm being probably overly cautious on. But uh, yeah, for the sake of the series, I want to make sure we are on a stable version. So we'll be updating pretty soon and that will give us that functionality. Along with the EV gas turbines, but you know. <laughs> for now, we live with some spaghetti. But yeah, with that, we have mission accomplished and that is also going to wrap up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.